The Docklands Light Railway turned 30 years old in September 2017 and Londonists were invited along to see behind the scenes of its operations. It has two main depots, one at Beckton and one at Poplar. And we started our trip with a look behind the maintenance works that takes place out at Beckton. This is the main Beckton depot shed. Um, in this area here they're actually carrying out the major overhauls for the bogies. And these are the things that hold the wheels that are underneath the train and they just take them out as one block unit if you like and they'll strip it down to its bare frame and then rebuild with all new parts. Len's been working on the DLR for 30 years and he and his team keep the fleet of trains moving by performing maintenance on a daily basis. Uh, basically we're checking for cracks, uh, making sure that the two cylinder inside actually works when you've got air on it. See, it's, it's doing that because at the moment we've got a droppage of air, but the air should um, stop the leak. And basically what we're doing is replacing all the shoes and the bathroom plates and the actual shunt cables. Most of the work though is done overnight. During the peak hours most of the vehicles are in service, so maintenance is done on nights. Um, so they've got a very short window of possibly five to six hours to do the maintenance because all the vehicles are required during the day for service. The heavy maintenance work takes place on nights, the light maintenance takes place on days. There are 149 units on the DLR of two slightly different types. None of the original units that were first used when the system opened in 1987 run anymore. So we come around the corner and there's a train here it's got no wheels. <laughs> Len, where, where, are it, where are its wheels? Right, this is what we call the accommodation bogey. So the bogies have been taken out from what we've seen earlier, but the major part of that overall. And the rest of the coach is sat on these uh, just to have somewhere safe for the vehicle to sit while the bogies have been repaired. Outside, there were units parked up that aren't in service during the off-peak hours. But we jumped on an in-service train and headed west to Poplar. Now it's worth remembering that when the DLR opened in 1987, it had just two branches, and it's expanded greatly over time. Watch our Secrets of the DLR video here for this explanation of how the network has grown and where its original base was in the blue building next to Poplar Station. This is the OMC, the Operational Maintenance Centre. You have to remember this, when the Docklands Light Railway first opened in 1987, there were just two branches. The branch out to Beckton and the depot that is there now didn't exist. So this was where everything, and partially still is today, run from. That grey building back there, that was the old control centre. Nowadays, it's just a backup control centre. But we're just going to have a quick look around here to see what is still here. And as Poplar is where the train's passenger service agents book on and book off, one of the first things we found was a staff only entrance and exit. At Poplar Station there's a secret staff only entrance that only staff can use to enter the platforms. But before they get there, look, there's a little mirror. <laughs> check before you travel. Hello. <laughs> a little checklist to make sure that you are well presented before you go on. And this is the secret staff only entrance. Inside the offices that are here, I caught up with the director of the DLR, whose enthusiasm for the railway really came through. One of the things we've been focusing on is just reminding people just where they can get to and what great days out they can have. So many people have gone online, have gone to the TFL website, and have actually discovered a little bit about some hidden gems as well as some well-known attractions, all served by uh, a railway that has a great, in its own right, uh, level of experience, where you can see parts of London that you just don't have access to anywhere else. Best of all though, we found out that when he travels to work on the train, he enjoys doing that special DLR thing that we all like to do too. Now I think my passion is from a customer experience perspective. I love it when we basically go above and beyond. I, I really, what I enjoy, is what we do when we deliver service levels that really do, uh, let's just say, you know, we get positive responses. And with DLR, I think when I talk to people outside of work, they have smiles on their faces because there is something sort of engaging about the DLR. It, it fascinates people, there's no train driver still, and there's a lot of grown middle-aged men like myself who sort of fight to get the front seat uh, still, which I think is brilliant. Back at Beckton, we discover that there's actually new rolling stock on its way. There are 43 new trains coming, 33 replacing some of the older units and then 10 additional trains as well and should be in service from 2022. The new fleet will be walkthrough trains that will have air conditioning and mobile charging points as well. So there's plenty more to come in the future with the DLR.